Hey guys, this is Aaron. Today I want to take a look at using the scale tool. I know it's not real exciting at first. The scale tool is something a lot of people know how to use. They use it all the time in SketchUp. But I want to look at the different ways you can use the scale tool. Things like some, uh, some locking of axes and some grouping and how you can actually change how the scale tool works depending on the context. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So what we're going to do in SketchUp is we're going to create a tree. So I'm going to say, bye Stacy, and put in a circle. This is a standard circle. I'm just going to put in here, no particular size. I know, arbitrary modeling again. I'm going to take that and just do a quick push-pull. Now I'm going to grab the scale tool, and I'm going to pick this top piece. So you guys know scale tool. You've seen it before at some level. When I grab a 2D surface, if that surface is flat to the working plane, I, I just get this... Uh, just these few handles. I don't have, you know, there's no depth to it, just these single pieces. So it's real easy to just kind of play with this and move it around and kind of come up with an odd shape. So one of the things you can do with scale tool as you're moving these, these corner grips is uh, change what direction you're scaling. So you can see if I grab this lower right corner and start moving it, it scales smaller but also moves to the upper left. So if I go, go ahead and push, pull up another piece right here, and I will scale again. I could bring it back this way, same thing. You pull it across this way, and you see the difference between the corners and the sides are the sides, when you click and drag, it's actually going to distort that circle. The corners are going to, when I drag them, honor the actual shape. So it's not going to, it'll make it bigger or smaller, but keep it the same shape. Whereas this, this corner because I'm grabbing it on the edge, it's actually going to distort the shape. So that's a good thing to keep in mind as you go through and use the scale tool. The other thing are modifier keys. If I click here, go into scale, and I start dragging and I hold down the option on Mac or control on Windows, it's gonna scale about the middle. So you can see that how it, it'll just go in the middle. Same thing works on the corner pieces to here too. So when I grab the corner, that means it's going to absolutely scale size around the middle. I'm going to go here and do a little more scaling. There we go. Just at this point, I'm just going to get a couple more pieces. So something else to look at here. Like I said, right now, we're getting that scale box in 2D because we have a 2D shape. If I wanted to actually scale more than just one surface. I could select a group like this, and if I hit scale now, of course I get that box. You guys have, again, probably seen that as well. Same rules hold true here. If I grab these middle ones, I'm gonna distort. If I grab these corner ones, I'm going to scale. If I grab these ones on the side, kinda all bets are off. This is where I can get some crazy scaling. So you can see I can actually drag it bigger in each direction, pull it out there. If I hold down shift while I'm doing that, then it is going to keep my absolute shape and just allow me to resize. On the corners, it does the opposite. If I grab a corner and hold down shift, it unlocks that scale and allows me to scale to any size. It's going to get kind of crazy with that. That box, you'll see, always aligns to the world axes if I'm scaling ungrouped uh, Geometry. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a little bit more. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna push pull this one up a little more. I'm gonna scale that. Give me an interesting shape to finish on. Pull that up, and one last scale, to kind of make that smaller. Okay. So that is my. What's going to be the base of my tree? It's not a good looking tree, but it's a tree nonetheless. All right, so what I want to look at now is if I grab this all together and I scale it. So like I said, these scale handles are aligned to the world axis. So here along the red side, one face, green side's one face, blue side's one face. That's pretty standard. You'll see that a lot. If I was to make this a group, still holds true right now if I scale that group, but if I come in here, if I was to grab it all now and scale, I'd see the same thing. But if I change the axes for this group, so if I come in here and I do something like 
this. Okay, my axis just got changed. So if I grab everything and hit scale now, it's showing it along the new axes, not the original box. See, this dotted line is the bounding box of that group. It's not aligned to that anymore because I changed that axis. So when I come out to the main section outside, you can see one thing, the bounding box changes. And if I hit scale right now, it also aligns that scaling box to what was inside there. So it's an important thing to note, it's not gonna always honor my origin or my axes on the outside, it is gonna honor what's on inside of a group or component. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna scale this around a little bit. And something else I can do with the scale tool, some people don't know about this, is when I do go to scale, when I normally scale, down in the lower right corner, it tells me a percentage. So this is 1%, drop down here, this is 50, Go up here, this is 150%. So I can type in a percentage if I want, but if I want that to be a specific height, say I want this to be exactly 10 feet tall, I can just type in 10 foot and hit enter. This is now a 10 foot tall piece. It's important to note that when you are typing that in, that is the distance from this handle to the one opposite. So that 10 is from the very top of this bounding box to the bottom of the bounding box. So if you grab something strange like this corner right here, if I was to grab this and type eight feet, it's gonna give me kind of a weird scale because that's from this point floating in space to this point. Not necessarily uh, what I wanna scale to. It's kind of an odd spot to scale. So just to put some of that stuff into practice now, I'm gonna take this piece, copy it over, and I'm gonna make this into a branch, so I'm gonna just kinda tip it out like that, and uh, maybe we'll have that come off of right here. And obviously, this scale is not gonna work, so I'm gonna grab my scale command, and I'm gonna scale back this direction. And then, of course, I am gonna do a little bit of moving. I'd like to say I could do it all with the scale command, but that's kind of a, a lot to ask of a single command. It's a suite of commands after all. Suite, S-U-I-T-E. So there you go. Scale is a great tool, not just to change the size of things, but to actually use the modifier tool while you're creating something. Remember, keep an eye on your modifier keys, reorient the axes to change your handles on your scale box, and use absolute values to scale. It's not just all percentages. So hopefully that video helped you out. Hopefully you liked it. If so, like us down below or subscribe. That way you'll know when the next video comes out. And most importantly, leave us a comment and let us know what you think of the job we're doing and if there's any other skills you think we should cover. Like making these videos a lot, but like it a lot more when we're doing something that you wanna see. Thank you.